The VHS Files podcast contains spoilers, adult content, and harsh language. Listener discretion is advised. Welcome to the mini sode. Hello, 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 everyone, and welcome back to the VHS Files podcast. And we are coming to you tonight with a little bit of a special episode. How's everybody doing? Great. Doing fine. Grieving a, a, a lost uh, artist. Yeah. yeah. So sad. So sad. Sad. It is. For it the, is sad. For the, <laughs> it is. That's why we're here. For the we're human all... beings out there. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, it's a, it's, I mean, you can tell some of us are, have already started, uh, having some drinks in memoriam. Exactly. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, I'm, pouring, I'm not pouring it out though. It's too good to pour out. Sorry. No, don't pour it out. Well, we are on tonight, uh, not doing our regular episode. We are doing a kind of a director spotlight here. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're doing another top four episode, but we are talking the films of director producer Richard Donner. Um, he unfortunately passed away uh, yesterday at the age of ninety one, and um, hits a little home for us here at the VHS Files just simply because the first episode we ever did was for The Goonies, which is a film Richard Donner directed. So when it we got the news that he had passed, we started talking about his filmography and all the movies that he's done over the years. And we decided, let's go on and talk about it. We'll talk about our top four favorite Richard Donner movies. And we have a special guest. Nathan Simmons is back on the show with us. Nathan. Hey, how's it going, guys? Uh, yeah, Nathan's here. Woo! Yeah, this was, <laughs> this was interesting. Like, Josh and I kind of uh, mind-melded <laughs> earlier this week <laughs> when, the, when the news dropped about, uh, about Richard Donner. And, and uh, first I reached out and I was like, hey, I don't know if you guys are planning on doing a Superman episode. If that's happening, then let, and he's, he said, we're literally talking about Richard Donner right now, what to do, what doesn't feel <laughs> exploitative and what feels like we're, you know, really paying tribute to his work. And, right. uh, and you know, me, I am uh, on a quest to be on every podcast this year. So <laughs> Nathan, why don't you tell us what podcast you're currently? Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. I, um, I'm on, I, well, previously I was on Two Drinks and a Haunting, uh, and Josh and I did an, an episode about uh, Ghostbusters on that show, and then mm-hmm. I was on you guys' Halloween episodes and Batman episodes, which were a blast. Um, and then, uh, now I'm currently doing the AIPT Comics podcast. Uh, we recap news and comic book reviews for the week, interview uh, guests, um, we recently talked to folks like Jeff Smith, the creator of Bone. Um, we've got cool. uh, the editor in chief of Heavy Metal Magazine coming up on an episode, Fuck which is yeah. which is really intense. <laughs> <laughs> but um, and then I also do uh, the Silver Linings playlist, uh, which Great is show. a show that uh, tries to find the uh, bright spots and some of cinema's bleakest endings, which I think kind of will serve us today. <laughs> Great concept. I love the concept of that. Yeah. Oh yeah. I wish I had come up with it, but I'm joining, uh, <laughs> on the fifth season. So <laughs> as a co-host, um, and then my friend Ashley and I just launched a show called, Oh, that's a scary movie where we talk about, uh, horror films and that is uh, that's actually part of her feed for the southern haunts podcast so it's kind of like a spin-off show from that you're like the nice. regis philbin of, of podcasts aren't <laughs> yeah I, well yeah or like the you know the Dwayne the rock johnson of podcasts where i won't say no to anything <laughs> You're the uh, Nicolas Cage of podcasts. You're right. Yeah, this is, I'm, yeah, I'm working up to my Willie's Wonderland of podcasts. <laughs> Has Nicolas Cage worked with Richard Donner? <laughs> I'm I trying to find well, a segue. Hey, <laughs> there's some six degrees of separation there. He was going to be Superman at one point. Sure. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. So, the spider Superman. Spider those those spider haunting Superman. images. <laughs> and he also, <laughs> am I wrong here? Didn't he name his son? Kal-El. Kal-El. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Okay. Because he was trying to figure out what to name his kid that wouldn't get the shit kicked out of him like all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, well, I don't. Me. <laughs> well, the, fa- the fact that he's the son of Nicolas Cage, I didn't think he would, but I don't know. Uh... Kids suck. Is it the one? Is it the one that's in like the death metal band? Is that him? 
Oh, I don't know. Yeah, I he's got the one son. Yeah, that's all like this. black metaled out, dude. He's hell yeah. Cool. Good for him. <laughs> well, let's talk about Richard Donner a little bit. I want to bring yeah. up his films. Um, I'm not. I wouldn't say I'm super well versed in Richard Donner's movies, but I've mm-hmm. seen the ones that are probably the staples in his filmography. But he's got a handful that came out before The Omen that I'm not super familiar with. Mm-hmm. But I think he really kind of broke into the mainstream with The Omen. Um, right. he, he did Superman in '78 which launched the career of all kinds of people. And it was a big movie for the time. One of them, you know, you, you will believe a man can fly. You know I mean? It, it was a big deal when Superman a legendary came tagline. <laughs> yeah. I mean, genuinely, it's so cool. We talk taglines every, every episode. We yeah. talk right. taglines. That's, I can't think of a better one that we've covered. Yeah. Right. I mean, it's an it's incredible a, it's a great one. They usually suck. <laughs> yeah, they're usually not very good at all. Yeah, because I'm usually the one that digs those up, and I, they majority of the time they are horrible. I just saw. I just looked up the. I, I just rewatched Repo Man and looked up the poster for it, and the original poster, the tagline is like four paragraphs. Wow, it's it's Holy absurd. Shit. It's, a it's just like, it's, it is. It's a synopsis. <laughs> And we were talking about the Emilio Estevez repo man. Right? Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, my oh, yes. God. Oh, Jesus. That's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> I, I saw it a while back. I've got the Criterion Edition. Mm-hmm. I haven't seen it recently, so I, it's due for a rewatch for me. But Yeah, it's a um, trip. So after Superman, he would go on to kind of direct Superman 2 in a way, but not mm-hmm. really. Um but other than that, I mean, he would do The Toy with Richard Pryor and yeah. Jackie Gleason, which was something I watched when I was a kid quite a bit. Um, after that, The Goonies, which we've already brought up. First episode of our show. Uh, mm-hmm. it, it holds a special place in, I would say, all of our childhood. Um, Lady Hawk, which I haven't seen. I would really like to see it. Although, in preparation for this, I was shoving in a bunch of Richard Donner movies and could not find that one for you free streaming in, anywhere. Gosh. Shoving them right shoving up in there. Right yeah, way up but uh, most notably as well other than superman he is responsible for the entire lethal weapon series which yeah. again big part of my childhood i think Definitely. probably big part of all of our childhoods uh scrooged which we've talked about on our show before mm-hmm. in one of our christmas episodes radio flyer which i was not aware he directed that maverick yeah. seen that years ago haven't watched it in so long that was another one i wanted to watch before this but didn't get around to it assassins with Sylvester Stallone and Antonio Banderas. And Sharon Stone. I, I watched what the hell it? out of that when I was younger. We got a great gif out of it. I mean, that's really ultimately. <laughs> right. You get a great gif out of it. Great two-hander, Stallone and Banderas, though. <laughs> like, just wild. That movie, I mean, it's kind of like Demolition Man uh, in a way. Sure. I mean, it doesn't take care take place in the future, but. There was like a whole, there's a whole, there's like a whole genre in the nineties of what if Stallone hated a guy? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, After Assassin's uh, Conspiracy Theory, another one with Mel Gibson and Julia Roberts. I did rewatch that one for this and I've got a few Mm -hmm. things to say about it briefly here in a few minutes. Mm -hmm. And then other, other than that, uh, most recently a movie called Timeline with Paul Walker, who was also passed since uh, mm-hmm. since then and uh 16 blocks which nathan and i were talking a little bit about that one before yeah. we got on the show um because most deaf is in it and what were you saying you were oh you, you had said something to me where like hollywood, hollywood. was trying to shove most deaf into movies and it just hollywood was, God, really, yeah, it was. Like, there was a period in like the uh, like the mid 2000s <laughs> where hollywood was like determined to make most deaf a movie star and like i was kind of on rewind. board yeah. for it the italian job the Italian mm-hmm. Job, The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, like, and I think he is a compelling actor. He's he's very he makes very weird choices, and I would love for someone. I think the person who used him best, uh, I mean, Donner used him to great effect, and then Michelle Gondry and Be Kind Rewind was like, yeah, this is totally like a mumblecore guy. Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> like he gives these interesting indie performances, and I'm I'm ready for the most defaissance. Like, <laughs> I want <laughs> that to happen. Have you listened to the, any of the? The podcast he's doing with Chappelle, the uh, no, I haven't. What's it called? The Golden. Uh, great, do, great uh, doing they, your research there. Eric. They don't need me to plug them. They're doing <laughs> but, sure. Uh, I'll, it's got Talib Kweli and 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 oh, cool. Bay and and uh, Dave Chappelle. It's nice. it's good. I'll I, check that I, out. You have to you have to uh, get a subscription to a, another service to listen to. Gotcha. It. Have, that would explain have why have some, I haven't seen it yet. Yeah, they have some free. <laughs> heard it. 
they have some free clips and stuff that I've listened to, and uh, cool. I think they had like one episode that was free, and it was pretty good. I nice. Like Seth, I think I like most stuff as uh, he played Chuck Berry in Cadillac, Cadillac Records too. Oh, he's great in Cadillac Records. Dude, good he call. did a great nice cool. job in that one. I yeah. loved him in that movie. That he's a talented on, dude for sure. That movie's on my watch list. I haven't. I, Jason's told me that it's really good so many dude, times, and I have not. So watched good, it man. Yet. That's the history of rock and roll happening yeah, in that movie, dude. Yeah. It's a it's right a fun there. watch for sure. But um, as far as Richard Donner, he was also a, a producer, was an executive producer on a lot of things. Another mm-hmm. movie that we've talked about on this show, Lost Boys, he was an executive producer yeah. on that. Uh, Free Willy and all the Free Willy sequels. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Which, <laughs> Free Willy! Um, yeah. He was a producer on the first X-Men, Any Given Sunday, and also the Tales from the Crypt series and both yeah. movies. Um Demon Knight and Bordello of Blood. Mm -hmm. He's had his hand in a lot of the things that really kind of shaped me as a movie lover and stuff that I watched as a kid. So it kind of hit me a little hard whenever I found out he was he was no longer with us and really got me thinking about let's you know, let's talk about some of his movies a little bit. Yeah, for Um, sure. Um, I want to do a special little segment of Almost Famous. I know that dude. I don't know them. I know her. Haven't you ever heard of that guy? What was that guy who was in that movie that was out last year? I'm sort of famous for being almost famous. So he is very notorious for working with a lot of the same people all all the Mm -hmm. time. And our normal Almost Famous is really kind of highlighting those people that are in the background of movies that you've seen. Mm-hmm. all over the place, but you may not be able to place their name, all that kind of stuff. Well, we're doing a little bit of a different take on it here tonight. We're talking about the people that have been in Richard Donner movies that may not be the stars they are today if, if they would not have been in a Richard Donner movie. Sure. Obviously, I've written down a bunch of people that he's worked with, most notably Mel Gibson. He's worked with Mel Gibson quite a bit. Now, Mel Gibson was already a star. when, yeah. when uh, Mad Max, dude. He was already yeah. kicking it. Mad Max had shot him into superstardom and then Lethal the Weapon. The beloved Mel Gibson. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, old sugar tits himself. <laughs> <laughs> but but in doing my research there, I thought, I'm, I mean, he's not really a good candidate for this, but I do want to sure. bring up Danny Glover. Yes. Oh, for sure. Be- because, he's on my list. Um, you know, we all know who he is, and he'd done a few movies before Lethal Weapon, but I think Lethal Weapon is really what shot him into superstardom and mm-hmm. made him a household name. Because mm-hmm. um, before this, he was he was in Silverado, a uh, Western from the 80s, mm-hmm. and uh, The Color then, Purple. I say The Color Purple is really the only big movie he had been in, I mm-hmm. think. I love Danny Glover. Yeah. yeah. What a lovable fellow. Like one of the like easiest pulls for an iconic line in history is I'm getting too old for this shit. This shit. Like, I wanted to bring this up actually, and uh, I mean we're gonna have a quote section, but sure. And I ruined it again. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I did this. I did this last time too. <laughs> we all had that one wrote down. Thanks. Well, uh, Donner was apparently working on a Lethal Weapon Five. Ah, is what I I, I heard rumors of that. I mean I I. I saw, you know, some things about that. If he was too old for this shit in 1987, mm-hmm. right? <laughs> holy God, is he too old for this shit now? I mean, my God. Well, it's but, funny. Uh, the ghost of this shit passed. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, we, this man was fighting Jet is, Li like 20 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> is it, is it, is it going to be basically Mur- uh, uh, Riggs visiting Murtaugh in the nursing home? <laughs> right. And there's an underground cocaine ring in the nursing home. Because yeah. that's what's going on. Sounds like yeah. a great plot. They could probably do, do something like that. I'd that, honestly be, honest be down you. for that 100%. Give yeah. me Riggs and Murtaugh, however the old. Or are. are they going to go to space? <laughs> Hey, we're not talking Fast and Furious on this show. Sorry, guys. Nope. But I thought he was a very notable, like he is a, you know, everybody knows who Danny Glover is nowadays. And I think it's probably because he was Murtaugh and Lethal Weapon. Um, does anybody else have anybody in that they... I got one. Yeah, go for it. Well, I'm going to go with this. I know he was in a you know, Oscar-nominated movie before this, but I really think that kind of kick-started his career was Kiefer Sutherland in Lost Boys that Richard Donner produced. Uh, oh sure yeah i would go with that i mean because i mean he was in was a uh, stand by me uh mm-hmm. he, he was a character in that movie but from here on you I mean you just go back and look at keith kiefer Sutherland, and from that point on he just, just doing skyrocketed yeah i mean he was in everything after that so yeah that's who i'm gonna go with over danny Glover. <laughs> I have one that's that's more that's closer to how you guys usually do. Almost oh, you famous, dug deep. That's cool. You dug deep. I got a couple. Um, that's of, very. Uh, cool. I got a couple here that I dug deep on as well. Yeah, this one deep cut. Uh, 
Clifton James plays the sheriff in Superman 2 who uh, tries to like stop Zod and Ursa and Nan when they first arrive. He is also the actor who plays uh, Sheriff J.W. Pepper in Live and Let Die and The Man with the Golden Gun. Oh, yes. <laughs> he basically plays the same character in both this movies. This is why you're here, Nathan. Where he's just like, no, like if you this. need a if you need a like a deep cut from a Bond movie, I'm your guy. Yeah. Cuz I I know nothing important. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um it is it's just fascinating to me that he kind of like made a like made a name for himself playing that type of character for a while. He would he also was um the district attorney who prosecuted Al Capone and the Untouchables. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I think really, there's like I mean, a handful of we, we we could probably do a top four episode on top four the usual actors suspects that played the played cops or sheriffs or something. Sure, right? Yeah, there's guys that oh, it's like the that's sheriff, all they do, small town sheriff in like <laughs> right. every movie, that's, and and every movie from that point on, that's all they are is a sheriff right. or a deputy in every movie, ever. right? Or just like a hard ass. <laughs> yeah, if I had time to dig deeper, I would have wanted to get into some of the TV because he did a ton of TV. Donner did a ton directed- of TV. Dude, he did Kojak and uh, freaking Wild Wild West and stuff. He directed a Nightmare at Twenty Thousand Feet, like yes, the with, right. Twilight William Zone Shatner, episode. Yeah, the Twilight Twilight Zone episode. Uh, Portrait it, of a frightened man, Mr. Robert Wilson. Mr. Wilson has just been discharged from a sanitarium, where he spent the last six months recovering from a nervous breakdown, the onset of which took place on, on an airliner, very much like the one in which Mr. Wilson is about to be flown home. Tonight, he's traveling all the way to his appointed destination which, contrary to Mr. Wilson's plan, happens to be in the darkest corner of the Twilight Zone. Quickly! There's a man out there. What? Look! Look, he's crawling on... I'm jumping. I mean, yeah, he had he had stuff what with um, uh, Gilligan's Island and Wild yeah. Wild West and uh, yeah. Get Smart and so many Perry Mason and all the Man from Uncle. Like, dude, loved the work and never stopped. <laughs> uh, he he gave a he gave a a, a young actor an, an unknown actor a, a a a job in The Omen. A young actor named Gregory Peck. No one heard of. <laughs> a young a young man yeah. i just watched the omen for the first time uh i finished oh, wow. i finished it today and i haven't seen it yet and i really wanted to watch it before this because i was worried it, would, it should be in my top I, four okay I'm gonna, I'm gonna touch this on this subject because josh is like my horror brother over here and he has never never seen the omen jenny never thinks- sat down Jenny thinks that we have watched it, but I watched it over the past couple of days. I watched, started it last night and finished it yeah. today. I do not remember it if I watched it. So, Dude, that's right up there with the Exorcist of sure movies you have to watch. I'm pretty sure we high school at my Halloween party. <laughs> I don't remember if we did. Probably not a real focused <laughs> watch. <laughs> I, know, I know I had seen the remake. I've definitely seen the remake of that. Oh, movie, yeah. I had not yeah. seen the original. Well, if I have seen the original, it had been lost from my mind because after watching it this time, I was like, I don't remember any of this shit. <laughs> so, yeah, it rules. I was just surprised when you said you hadn't seen that. I'm, I'm like, whoa. That's, it is, that's a it classic is, horror movie, dude. It, it was daunting putting together like my top four for this. And like, I literally eventually, we'll get into it in a little bit, but it, it eventually boiled down to like, what have I watched the most? What do I have the most nostalgia for? Because they're all yeah. like, He's never really, he never really made a stinker, like an out and out stinker. Right. Yeah. I mean, I, I'd seen Radio Flyer when I was a yeah. kid. I, I don't remember much about it. Again, I would love to have rewatched it. Um, you said, you, Nathan, when we were talking, you said Lady Hawk wasn't very good, but I, I still want to see it. I mean, I've, it's been on my watch list for ages and I yeah. just have not been able to get around to watching I'm, it. I'm kind of with you there on that one, Nathan. It's kind of. Oh, yeah. well, well, I'll get into it in a little bit for sure. <laughs> Jenny, well, you you, almost famous. Did yeah. you have an almost famous? Sean Astin. Yeah, I, I oh, have sure. a Sean Astin. Yeah, and definitely. For sure. I also have Josh Brolin. Josh Brolin. Josh Brolin. Yeah. yeah. And probably Christopher Reeve. If you're gonna... Yeah, I was going to say Christopher Reeve is the yeah. biggest no name that became somebody. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. uh, he was on my list for sure because he had not done a movie before Superman. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, it was his first oh. acting credit. So we would not have Superman within pop culture as we know it. Yeah. Had it not been for Dick Donner and hey, casting Richard. This uh, might be a good time when we're talking about like people that have he's worked with and stuff to mention 
Kevin Feige and Jeff Johns. Johns? Jeff Johns. Jeff yeah. Johns. Oh yeah, he did him. work with Jeff Johns yeah. at uh, work. They, uh, Donner actually co-wrote like several arcs of Action Comics. Action yeah. Comics, right? He actually and, did uh, Action Comics one thousand with Jeff Johns. He wrote mm-hmm. a, as part yeah, of the story in that one. Yeah, that was like two thousand eighteen. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, worth mentioning those fellows. Uh, uh, I don't remember the exact details of Feige, but he he worked at one of his companies or something like that. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people that we know of as like movers and shakers and you know the, the, a lot of people looked up to Richard Donner and continue to look up to him uh and it's just a, it it always seems to me like every time I read a story about Richard Donner you, you hear about like those guys who were like um an actor's director you know what I mean like he but he was like he was like an actor's director and a director's director like everyone liked his process enjoyed working with him Right. Uh, Mel Gibson, I think, called him Uncle Dick or something like that. I remember reading a quote from him where, like, people loved this man and, like, learned a lot from him. And it's, you know, we brought up the Goonies and it being our first episode. And in doing our research for that, whenever I, I still remember this, I watched mm-hmm. the commentary track. Sure. And it's Dick Donner and uh, uh, not all the kids from the Goonies, but a lot of them. And yeah. you can tell that, like, they just... They seem like they're a, a, a nice little tight knit unit. They all work together great. Uh, mm-hmm. Didn't have anything bad to say about the next one. Uh, yeah, I've, I've I've only seen good things. I did hear one. He apparently somebody on Superman got in an altercation with he, Dick Donner. Uh, well, okay, so the guy who played Non got into like physical altercations with everyone <laughs> on oh, set. like there's an episode of how did this get made where they have jack jack o'halloran on the show and he just talks of his like move oh, was dude. like grabbing people by the throat and picking them up like he would do that Good on Lord. set <laughs> frequently wow. to like producers and that other... guy had a crazy story about christopher reeve too didn't he he like, did he said he like he ass. like threatened him because christopher reeve was a method actor and it like put him off and he uh he also <laughs> said something like like his dad was if i remember the story correctly jack o'halloran's dad was in the mafia or like very heavily connected to the mob and to the people that the godfather was based on (laughs) and so so like (laughs) there were like all of these like occasionally on set he would do stuff where he was just essentially like hey you know who my family is like (laughs) yikes so take that with a grain of salt Uh, the only other story i know of of someone like locking horns with Richard Donner. Drooched. No, that that was what I was gonna say is Bill Murray said something like he was in an interview on Conan O'Brien was asked like, Do you did you and uh, Richard ever like disagree with each other? And he said something like only about everything every day. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. I think I brought up that quote when we when we did our Scrooged episode. Oh that's like, right. Apparently yes. they did not work together well at all. Yeah. Which I could I think you could very easily kind of blame bill murray on that one <laughs> yeah <laughs> big personality he was kind of known for being a little crazy at that scrooged time. is basically like dick donner trying to reel bill murray in the entire time <laughs> like it is it is it's i love it into itself <laughs> yeah but i mean that movie speaks miles for what was actually happening at that yes. point in time <laughs> um i do want to get into a couple little deep cuts here um mm-hmm. I'm, i kind of want to talk about the people that you always see in richard donner movies yeah, uh, I started noticing this uh, with Lethal Weapon um, the night we heard that he had passed when Jenny and I watched Lethal Weapon and I started seeing all these faces and a person that is notorious for coming up in almost famous and past episodes, not just Dick Donner movies we've talked about is Miss Mary Ellen Tremor. <laughs> oh, sure. She yeah. has been in a lot of Richard Donner stuff, uh, n- namely, you know, uh, the Goonies and, and Lethal Weapon and just the list goes on and on. Mm-hmm. Um, also, I don't know if, I don't know if I'm saying his name correctly. I could not find the pronunciation, but it's Steve Cahan. Is it the chief of police guy? The chief it is. It from is. Le- Cause he's a Superman also. Yeah. It's, it's that guy yeah. right there. Yep. Um, he's in, uh, crap ton of <laughs> Richard Donner movies. Yeah. Um, I, I think from Superman on to 16 blocks, like all the movies mm-hmm. that Donner directed other than the Goonies, he was not in the Goonies. But I think from Superman on to the end, the only movie he did not work with Donner on was The Goonies. Wow. Dang. Now, that's awesome. As far as deep cuts goes, I mean, I did write down Renee Russo because I don't know if she would have became a household name had oh, it not been for Lethal yeah. Weapon 3. Sure. Yeah. 
Um, Elijah Wood was in Radio Flyer, but however, I don't know if, I mean, Elijah Wood went on to do other things that made him a star, but uh, Tom Atkins, who has been yes. uh, brought up on our show before, was in the, Lethal Weapon. The man, the absolute man. <laughs> the man. <laughs> yeah, but he was, he was kind of already moving on up in the B-movie area. For Which sure. ties yeah. in it ties into the Halloween series with Halloween three, but we Great. also have another tie in with Halloween, Halloween six. Which Nathan will know who I'm talking yep. about here, oh, Mr. Yeah. Mitchell Ryan, who plays That's Doctor right. Wynn in Halloween six, which you guys mm-hmm. talked about on uh, Silver Linings uh, playlist. That's right. Yeah. And if you have not listened to that episode and you don't know anything about Halloween six, go listen to that episode because they go off the chain both and talk about how crazy movie. that movie is. Oh, so, so so me and Nathan need to have just a podcast where me and him can tear apart <laughs> Halloween 6 because I have both versions. I, <laughs> you might, we might end up disagreeing on it because it's a mess that I love so much. Right. <laughs> it's garbage, <laughs> but it's like. I might need to go back. I missed that episode. I might need to go back and listen to that one. <laughs> Quick note on Radio Flyer. Yeah. Uh, with Elijah Wood, actually, he didn't do a whole lot before that. That that was pretty darn early in his. Yeah, you know I mean? yeah. I'm just he was in like, straight up Paul Abdul video before that. Uh, a couple of other things, but uh, yeah, Radio Flyer. You know, Elijah I Woods in the straight, straight up. up video. Yeah, <laughs> apparently I did not know that. <laughs> yeah, I don't recall that. Also, Paul Abdul, that. Forever Your Girl, Child Uncredited. Wow, interesting. He was in a couple Child of commercials. Too. Is my Welcome to the Elijah Wood top four episode. Yeah, right. top four. <laughs> Elijah Wood Paul Son, Abdul video up. episode. <laughs> well, speaking just, of just top young four. Elijah Wood top four. <laughs> speaking of top four, let's go ahead and get to why we're here tonight. We're talking about each of our favorite Richard Donner movies. We're going to go around and do all of our top fours. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I think this will be interesting just simply because uh, all, all of us, I don't think, have seen all of his movies. So we're only kind of judging on what we've seen. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's kind of why I started watching a few movies so I could get a little bit more information in there. Yeah, and, uh, for sure kind of beef up my list a little bit but we're gonna go around we're gonna start with our number fours and then we'll go all the way to number one and that's how we do things around here okay who wants to start let's let our guests start okay nathan number four so the so like i said there's it was really hard for me to to pick things based on merit because he's a great filmmaker and like did a bunch of bangers and so my what I ended up doing was just kind of going with my heart, like what I grew up yes, with. Yes, so we want. Number, number four is Lady Hawk. He was a pickpocket. Who <laughs> thought that anything was better than prison. Little did he know what he'd escaped from wasn't half as strange or frightening as what he'd stumbled into. I do not believe what I believe, Lord. These are magical, unexplainable matters. And I beg you not to make me a part of them. The knight who had saved him wanted only two things. To free his lover and to take his revenge. I have waited almost two years for a sign from God. Sir, the truth is I talk to God all the time. And no offense, but he never mentioned you. The pickpocket was the key to his plan. But would you send a thief to guard your treasure? He was the last one in the world to act like a hero. It just happened by itself. And he was drawn into a magical, romantic adventure. Matthew Broderick. Michelle Pfeiffer. Rutger Hauer. Lady Hawk. Yeah! (laughs) Which is a, a, a very weird glorious beautiful mess it has uh uh rudger hauer and michelle pfeiffer as the most unlikely screen couple <laughs> you know rudger hauer playing uh the hero the heroic knight after russell or uh, kurt russell dropped out of filming <laughs> um would it ha- like- oh, okay i know the answer to this question but would yeah. it ha- would it have been a better movie if kurt russell would have stayed in it i you know what I don't know, and you know how much I love Kurt Russell, right? Uh, but like, there's something you don't normally see a romantic lead that's arch. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like, 
like Rudger Hauer is playing like this, you know, like Lancelot type, mm-hmm. but he's also got that insane, like Roy Batty, like stare to right. him the whole movie. Um, That's uh, a very different flavor than Kurt Russell for sure. Yeah. He's yeah. like, what if the hitcher was on a horse with a sword, <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> but did uh, he do that before uh, flesh and blood? The, uh, the I Beerhoven think, movie. I think it's right. Right. Before Cause I know flesh I, and I blood? have not, <laughs> we're going to start another thing here that's called I own it, but I haven't seen it. I have, <laughs> I have flesh and blood. I just have not watched it yet. But I know it takes blood. place in like medieval times and he's supposed to be like the hero in that. And yeah. He's serving drinks at medieval times. Um, <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> he's jousting. Uh, it was oh. the same year as flesh and blood. Wow. Yeah. So very different. Um, yeah. Rudger Hour is such an interesting, was such an interesting performer, yeah. but um, yeah, it's this movie about a uh, cursed couple who cannot be together because both of them transform into animals at different parts of the day. Uh, and uh, their companion is this uh, monk played uh, pickpocketing monk played by Matthew Broderick, who is very early in his career and delivers all of his lines. Like he's staring straight at a, like an oncoming truck. <laughs> like you know that that kind of like that kind of like frozen Matthew Broderick sort of performance that like he weirdly perfected, um, but he you has the Alfred best Molina dialogue in there too. Yes, Alfred Molina, uh, and uh, there's a couple of other like great character actors uh, in, in that movie. But it's yeah, it's odd. the The soundtrack is was composed by Alan Parsons Project, <laughs> like, <laughs> so it like. It's it was it's one of those like '80s fantasy movies that has like a prog rock score. I need so to watch this I gotta movie. I've not I seen it, it either. so bad now. Like, can we get this on the schedule like immediately? Right. I'll come back for it. It's, I'm looking it, like, at picture. I just this one is just an empty spot for me, and I yeah. need to yeah. fill it. It's been on my watch list for ages, and just have not got around to it. And I would have watched it before we got we recorded yeah. tonight, but I could not find it for free on a streaming service it's anywhere. Hard to, yeah, and I did I, not want to pay for it. I have like a pan and scan dvd i'm not even sure that it's gotten like a proper uh special edition blu-ray but uh i'm going to look into it after this because i it's so weird it is a it's a total mess but somehow it works it's sincere and it's sweet and it could only have been made when it was made by the people who made it sounds a lot like highlander yeah, uh, we'll we'll talk about that at some other time. <laughs> Which I was just on the Not a Bomb podcast yes. talking about Highlander. So if you want to hear me and my thoughts about the Highlander, go check out Not a Bomb podcast. You know what's interesting is I you you texted me like you were afraid that I was going to be mad that you didn't love it, <laughs> and, and and spoiler alert for the episode that Josh is on. But the uh, I, that's one of those movies where I'm like, whatever your opinion on this is, you're correct. It seems like everybody that I talk to, I'm like, you might not like what I got to say about Highlander. And they're like, oh, no, anything you have to say is totally warranted. This movie's a fucking mess, but I love it. You know, Yeah, like- for sure. And I think Lady Hawk kind of falls into that category. And I, I saw it as a kid, and it's just stuck with me ever since. Nice. Who wants to go next? T- number four. Let Jenny me. go. Don't let Jenny no, okay. Jenny, I'm going. Oh, okay. who wants to arm wrestle? I, th- I thought she might argue, but I'm just going to go. Man, she's, uh, uh, she said, so despite go. all the issues that may have arisen from working together and whatever, for me, uh, my number four is Scrooged. It's just such a unique Christmas movie. Yes. Uh, chaotic, yes. Mm-hmm. I'm sure the process of making it was a bit chaotic. Uh, and uh, it's... It's, you know, you could call it a beautiful mess uh, similarly, but uh, mm-hmm. so many great moments. Chaos usually makes for a good movie. I mean, we, I was talking yeah. about this with someone recently. Like, I think usually... when you have creative, properly creative, talented people, chaos makes good movies. Right. When you have just some right. asshole, uh, chaos doesn't make a great movie. But yeah, when you have so many interesting people, sometimes that, you know, you have some people button heads, but uh, the outcome of that one is just, I mean, talking about, picking from the heart that's one i watched as a kid yeah it it fit that uh that special place this was you know before uh something like uh uh god damn it what's that what's that disney movie with the jack skellington guy what this was my god i'm out i quit hey i i just had a blank moment (laughs) point being 
this was this was a point to inject like horror into Christmas at a time, yeah. you know, and and some some weirdness into Christmas at a time, you know, that I hadn't seen that before, and it it resonated with me uh, as yeah. a kid, and and I still love it. And, and those, uh, yeah, those effects are just great. Yeah, the effects yeah. are great, um, and the cast is like inspired. The Carol Kane, Buster Poindexter, Carol Kane, Kane is the oh, MVP. Dude, of she that is movie. great. Yeah. Oh. It's a toaster. Leave me alone. I know this one. Everybody knows this one. Let's go now. Yeah, does everybody know this one? Oh, Frank, we're fighting again. Let's not play anymore. Oh, look, Frank. What is it? It's a toaster. That bitch hit me with a toaster. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and that's one of those that, like, as a kid, I loved it so much that it never occurred to me. And you guys got into this a little bit in your episode that the production itself made no sense. Right. Like, like especially once they're they're doing like slow motion in real time, like when it cuts to the people like behind the scenes making like the Christmas Carol special. Yeah. There's so <laughs> much stuff that makes no sense. Right. Especially since the, earlier in the movie they show a trailer for the special that we know exists later. <laughs> right. It's very think- odd. It's hard to think of a, a movie before that, or for me anyway, in my mm. viewing journey, that got meta that way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I, yeah. You know what I mean? It, sure. it kind oh, of it got into like a weird meta place that kind of played with the format of TV production, movie production, that kind of stuff, and yeah. kind of walls breaking and different things like that. It was it was mm-hmm. just such an interesting movie. And, and, a, and a weird nostalgia thing for me is that's the first movie I ever watched I think where I was aware of a television edit because I saw it on VHS oh yeah and then I watched the TV version and I remember like being like 10 minutes in during the pitch meeting when they show that trailer that's like acid rain (laughs) (laughs) I love that it's so funny they cut that whole sequence out he starts to roll the the trailer and then it cuts to everyone like running out crying, like <laughs> hyperventilating. And somehow that's funnier. But like, <laughs> right. I think it is. But I remember as a kid thinking like, oh, wow, that like, I guess that was too hardcore for TV. I didn't My know that favorite was part thing. of that is watching Bill Murray watch the ad and he's just like eating it up. Like he's eyes are wide yeah. and he's just like, nodding his head. It's so good. <laughs> Jenny, what's your number four? Well, is this the part where I say if the movie is also on my list? Yeah. Okay. So Scrooge did Scrooge is my number two. Oh, num- number oh, two. Snap. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I absolutely love this movie for all of the reasons that we just said. I mean, mm-hmm. Bobcat Goldthwait is inspired in this movie. He's like great. He is perfect <laughs> for this role. Yep. Um, and, you know, we've already talked at length about Scrooge, yeah. but mm-hmm. it, it really, it's a must watch at mm-hmm. Christmas for us now. S- See our Scrooged episodes for yeah. more thoughts yeah. yes. on Scrooge. <laughs> and since since Jenny already uh, mentioned it, Scrooge is my number three as well. Wow. Oh, yeah. oh, geez. Yeah. I knew we were going to overlap. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, All right, Josh, is it on your top four? It is not on my Ooh. top four. Interesting. It is not on mine either. Oh, <laughs> that's a spicy. Well, just... what, what is your number four, Jason? <laughs> well, you did say directed or produced that Richard Donner helped bring us these beautiful movies into the world. But I went with this one because it affected me, not in, only in cinema, but in music. Uh, mm. I went with tales from the crit demon night. Oh, hell yeah. Because okay. he had, he, I mean, not only that, I mean, Donner had helped bring along the whole tales from the crit, uh, like the, uh, the, the uh, revival. In the Twilight Zone, but he also did. He, he br- helped bring that to HBO. The whole Tales from sure. the Crypt TV yeah. show, him and Joel Silver, and all that brought all big that impact along. on horror in general. With that, oh god, he yeah, he received a couple sure. awards, I think, for horror science fiction awards for uh, his work with Tales from the Crypt. But I mean, he he wasn't a director on that. He was a, a producer, but like you said, he was a, a big person behind the scenes of Tales mm-hmm. from the Crypt yeah. movies and TV show. But uh, I love this movie as a kid. Uh, I mean, I was probably like a sophomore, junior in high school when this came out. Mm-hmm. Uh, love Billy Zane's character in this he movie. He is batshit oh fucking my crazy, man. God. It's an I inspired mean, performance. Dude, yeah. and we get like a young Jada Pinkett before she became yeah. Miss Smith. Yeah. Uh, 
all that uh we get was it dick miller from gremlins dick miller oh, yeah. william He's sadler dude william sadler but uh the, i mean like i said cinematically musically uh this the soundtrack to this movie is fantastic and it brought yeah. me one of my favorite bands to this day machine head is on sure. the soundtrack i never knew who they were until this movie came and now you're like they're better than the rest <laughs> yeah well i don't know rob flynn's kind of went off the deep end with some of the music lately but, uh, i'm like but old school i mean this movie did like i said i love the movie if it comes on tv i'm gonna watch it i mean it's even got great special effects and stuff in it the sure. demons and everything it's it's a it's a great little fun horror movie to watch but like i said the whole soundtrack is great i mean i would have went i would have went, went with bordello of blood myself <laughs> that, uh, just that, i would love to i've been saying out. i know you're josh because uh that's not good at all i but, uh, i would love to uh i would love to find out that richard donner was the music supervisor on that movie also and he's just he was just listening to like thrash metal <laughs> dude yeah because that that soundtrack is like machine head pantera filter sure. Uh, Grave Diggers, which was some of the Wu Tang guys, oh, yeah, and, oh yeah, and stuff like that. All that on that sound. I mean, I can't tell you how many times Grave I ran that whole sound uh, tr- soundtrack over uh-huh. and over in my truck back in the days. But yeah, that's my number four. So, all right, well, great number four, Jason. Thank you. Right, okay, so Jenny, I'm sorry, you're number Jenny, four. Do tell. Well, this is probably going to spark some controversy. Ooh. Controversy. I love this word. Uh, that's a dollar fifty word. Lethal Weapon. Wow. Is my number yeah. four. Number Great four. Movie. Number four. Okay. Uh, what if what if Jenny's whole list is the Lethal Weapon movies in a in like chronological uh, order? They did not cross my mind. I might that crossed my mind. <laughs> and then we get to four and she's like, it's 1998. Jet Lee's hotter than ever. <laughs> oh my God. They're probably the four movies of his that I've seen the most times. I will oh, go ahead sure. and say that. In my defense, <laughs> Lethal Weapon is not a movie that I have seen over and over and over again. Sure, right. And I think it takes a back seat to Die Hard. It does. You yeah, know, sure. yeah. we probably watched we watched Die Hard at least once a year and probably more like in pieces. Yeah. Mm. We don't watch Lethal Weapon every year. I can't remember the last time we watched Lethal Weapon until the other night. Right. So that's a, that's a, a why do people An not watch it on comparison? Hey, I don't know on. why you're comparing these two. All right, films. this is where what I'm going. To, this is the controversy I'm throwing. I don't give a care what anybody fucking thinks. Die Hard is a Christmas movie, but Lethal Weapon is also a Christmas movie. I don't. <sighs> if one is, the is. other is right. You you got real defensive about a thing nobody <laughs> said. <laughs> no, I'm just saying. No, because they're talking about Die Hard. I prefer Lethal Weapon as a Christmas movie over Die Hard. I'm sorry, y'all can argue with me all you want. For not arguing with you, we 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 talked about this while we were watching *Lethal Weapon*, and I think it's the tequila. I think the reason it gets these sort of comparisons is because you've got um, the same the same composer for the score. Mm. It's set at Christmas time. It's a sure. You know, it has a lot of very similar things, and I they think, get yeah. compared a lot in the way that like. Uh, RoboCop and Terminator get compared a lot. They're completely different films that yeah, just happen right. to have some. I mean, they're a year apart. Is that so, true? That's true too. They're very, they're close. Um, yeah, no, Lethal Weapon rules. It's a movie I, I didn't see until I was, I think, I think the first time I watched it, I was probably in high school. Like wow. I, I came to that one later. Um, but uh, it, it's weird because the the sequels are like more conventional action films. I would yeah. say maybe the second one, maybe not quite as much, but like it's it when you rewatch it it is shocking how much of it is like a harrowing character study yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, it's oh, like, very dark yeah, and yeah, that's is. probably why i didn't see it when i was a sure. kid because i mean you know die hard and i'm gonna compare them sorry die that's hard's fine. one thing mm-hmm. but lethal weapon is mel gibson with a gun in his mouth crying yeah. on his trailer floor that's a rough scene time. to watch man it's, yeah yeah and yeah i mean Riggs is dark in well, let me let movie. me just go yeah. ahead and put it. I mean, Lethal Weapon's my number one. So, oh wow, I'm, it's my number two. So might, we're just go ahead. This is an upset, and I'm just going sheer because, but I am sheerly going off of nostalgia. It's not on my list. Wow. Yeah, and I, and I hey, love, respect. I love Lethal Weapon. 
<laughs> I think it's I think it's a fantastic movie. It's just not on my list because of the just simply because of the way I compiled it. <laughs> I mean, Lethal Weapon would have been on my list, but I knew one of you guys would do, so I picked something else. Uh, I knew so you, know, always I, the I, I knew Josh was going to be number what one. Or Aaron. <laughs> yeah. I made alternate list here just in case. I picked uh, just to be different. I picked uh, one of Richard Donner's Facebook video posts. This is my favorite. <laughs> film. It was just a picture of a video of his dog. It's like five seconds, but it's my favorite film from him. It I, feels picked a, I picked real. a book about the Donner party. <laughs> <laughs> I did with his episode of Gilligan's Island that he did. Yeah. All right. So that was Jenny. So what do you got, Josh? You're number four. Number four. My number four would have been. We're still screeched. on number four. <laughs> yes, because nobody will shut up. <laughs> it's Nathan's um, fault. <laughs> my number four would have been Scrooged, um, but I think uh, after I finished the Omen, it kind of yeah. edged it out. Uh, I, I thought the Omen was really good. Why it would not have stuck in my head if I had seen it before, I don't know. Maybe I was if if it was on at a party we were at at one at one time, I just wasn't paying attention to it or what. We were making mm. out. Probably making out. Ooh, or... yeah, mm, smoochy, nice. smoochy. <laughs> making out to the old. We got the, we, nothing's hotter than the son of the devil on TV. <laughs> right. I've always said that. <laughs> you were making out during Schindler's List. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Sorry, another Seinfeld reference. Oh, but yeah, right, I mean, right. <laughs> the performances in The Omen, I mean, older movies tend to have, like, wooden performances, in my opinion. Or more, opinion. like, presentational. Yeah, and, and, and like, Gregory Peck is great in it. Great. Um, the relationship between he and his wife in it is really good. I love the kid actor who plays Damien. Yeah. Um, and, and just the, I mean, it's got some very brutal moments and some pretty freaky shit in it. Uh, David Warner as uh, Keith Jennings, the the, the photographer, yeah, I think is dude. he's excellent. I loved yep. him in Waxwork. He's always good. He's <laughs> he. I, I saw him at um, Pensacon last year. He was what? being interviewed. Yeah, he was being interviewed by um, Mick Garris for the Postmortem podcast, wow. and he he described himself as uh, he. They were talking about how he like grew up with like Patrick Stewart and stuff like that. They were like contemporaries, and he says. Wow. Uh, he said, Patrick's a classically trained actor. I'm what you call a letterbox actor. And he says, what, do you, what does that mean? And he said, well, every day I go to the front door and I look through the letterbox. And if something has come through it, I say, sure thing. <laughs> so, like, it's, so, it's so that's great. Like, excellent, that's great. Excellent that's great. quote. <laughs> um, that's, a, that's a great interview if you ever get a, a chance to listen to it. Um, but also with the you know being that Nathan is now on silver linings and they're trying to find the silver lining in these bleak endings like yeah. I'm a sucker for bleak endings and that well, one has a I very have not seen ending. the omen yet so let's try Well I'm not going to talk business. about the ending it, but I mean spoiler alert it's bleak I get <laughs> There is a there's a mounting tension through the movie though there is like it's it's this there's this incredible balancing act in that movie because they want you want the parents to take action because the audience kind of knows from the word go yeah. that there's something fucked up about this kid. <laughs> um, but the, but like Gregory Peck and, 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 um, and Lee Remick, they play, they play that part of not wanting to believe yeah. poorly of their child so well. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it really is this kind of, I mean, there's some really scary moments in it, but a lot of it is this slow burn family drama in a way. Mm -hmm. Yep. And that's kind of what I thought was interesting about it this time is mm -hmm. it, it almost doesn't play like a horror movie. I don't want to talk too no. much about it since yeah. Eric hasn't seen it, but, um, but yeah, I mean, I, it was enough to, for me to, to bump it out, uh, bump Scrooge out and put it in my top four. So that's not, well, I'm excited and, to watch it now. Yeah. After that. And, and then Jerry Goldsmith score rules. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Eric, number three. My number three, and I'm sure this won't be on anyone's list, Goonies. Oh, my Ooh. God. It's not on my list. Ooh. It's just the best. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The Goonies. Is it The Goonies? The Goonies. The, yeah, the it's Goonies. The Goonies. Sorry. The Goonies. <laughs> it's number two on my list. It is number one for me. I am not surprised by that at all. I, I, For our I, thoughts on the Goonies, please see episode, episode, episode one. one. That's yeah. all we're saying. Uh, episode one's a little rough. I don't know if you really need to go back. Uh, I purposely left it off here because we've already done it. So. <laughs>
And I still think the Monster Squad's better. I love how I love how Jason's just like, I'm not going to obey any kind of rules. I'm just going to, you know, we talked about it already. I'm not going to do it. It's dead. I left all my favorite movies off this, my favorite movies list. Yeah. Plus, the Goonies is not one. The Goonies is not one of my favorite movies. When I I was asked to make a list, I put away childish things. (laughs) (laughs) Well, in episode one, I have said in 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 another episode that I still like Monster Squad better than the Goonies. Sure. Yes, but argument. Richard Donner didn't direct or produce I Monster Squad. I don't care. So it's irrelevant care. to this conversation. I left it yeah. off my list. But is it better than Die Hard? <laughs> <laughs> is it a Christmas movie? I mean, Sean Astin isn't is no John McClane, but no. Uh, but imagine, yeah, I mean, imagine Robert Davi as Hans Gruber, though. <laughs> he could probably pull that off, huh? Crush it. Uh, but what what can you say? Goonies, a classic for, you know, our our childhood. Yeah. And, uh, launched a bunch of careers and uh, stood the test of time, I think. And uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, you know. Goonies, I, talk about it, guys. It's talk one that Goonies. I watched. It's one that I watched when I was very young, and then for some reason, uh, I, I didn't revisit it until I was much older. And when I did, I was like, "Fuck, this is great." It's just so strange that, like, I, it, I feel like it's one of my biggest, like, nostalgia blind spots that I don't have <laughs> fond memories of playing, watching Goonies over and over again. Well, I talk about, I talk about it in the in the episode, yeah, Goonies episode, but. I was kind of the same way. I I was almost like hipstery about it where everyone loved the Goonies so much. I kind of like, yeah, just kind of like, I want my own thing, you know? Mm -hmm. But yeah, yeah, revisiting it once you get a little older and you go, okay. It's undeniable. Pretty pretty magical. I think that's one big thing with Donner is he, he, he has a great, uh, he has a, he has a great ability to make something feel magical. Uh, Mm -hmm. He does it in Goonies. He does it in, Superman, mm-hmm. uh, the sort of uh, magic is the only word I can kind of think of. The sort of cinema it. magic that yeah. kind of feels bigger than its parts. Well, even right? exactly. even you know, again, not not going to say much about the plot or anything, but I, you get the same sort of thing from the Omen. I got I got that from watching the Omen as well. Like even though it's dark, it's still like that same sense of it is there. Like I, I completely agree. Like he's he's got some way, kind of well, not in the same way, but similar way to how spielberg i think yeah achieves some of that with yeah. spielberg and uh, spielberg and, and zemeckis and donner are like these act these directors that i adore because they take these they they take these concepts that i think most people in hollywood would view as kitschy or or disposable and mm-hmm. they make these grand adventures with a sense of wonder i mean he's mm-hmm. he, he's he's essentially made a, a, an action movie an action adventure movie for children mm-hmm. that yeah. appeals to all ages and that is such a high wire act that sure people yeah. still have trouble landing absolutely mm-hmm. and that's something spielberg built a career on yeah. same kind of thing is is yeah uh making something kind of for all ages that it's hilarious it's scary like yeah yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah yeah i wish i wish movie more yeah. kids movies had more scary stuff in them like they did the 80s well you know i i was i made a joke about robert davi a minute ago but i think the secret to the fratellis is that they're not caricatures for most of the run of the movie like they they play it pretty i mean mama fratelli is kind of hilarious but like (laughs) they play it pretty straight i never thought she was hilarious yeah i thought she was scary Dude, she was scary and throw mama from the train that's true i would throw her from a train (laughs) (laughs) in a heartbeat but so Robert break- Davi's scarier in that movie than he is when he plays a Bond villain. Like, it's <laughs> yeah. it's wild. Goonies is the quintessential childhood movie. Mm-hmm. Sure. Like, for me. Yeah. It's, sure. It has for a generation, such it was. a huge place in my heart. Yeah. Like, for sure. I mean, I, I wanted to be Data so bad. Like, the fact that he carried around all this stuff and these inventions. And- Shoes. Are you crazy? Data. Pinterest lapel and all of that stuff. Dude. Like I, just the yeah. fact that a kid put all that together and had it on his person was amazing to me. So yeah, I mean, this movie is definitely you know one of those that will never be old. 
I will watch it till the day I die. It's just, it's one of those kind of movies. Number three, Jenny? Superman. Superman is my mom's favorite comic book character. Yeah. Um, she really loves this movie. <laughs> so we saw it a lot. Um, and I told her we were doing this episode, and she was like, oh, he did Superman? Like Christopher yeah. Reeve's Superman? Yeah. Oh, I love it. And she started talking about it. And so this movie is a part of my childhood. Yeah. And yeah, seeing a man fly, see, seeing him stop time and reverse it, like, what, what a concept. Like, it just... He flipped it and reversed it. Yep. Scourge of the friend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for Josh to do it. Nathan beat you to it, Josh. And I is sure for number like yeah. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> but I, I watched Superman in preparation for this because it's been years. Because yeah, Superman was never really my my thing. Like I watched them when I was younger. Unfortunately, uh, Quest for Peace is probably the one I've seen the most. Uh -huh. Oh, my God, you poor child. Uh, I don't think I would have known who Richard Pryor was had it not been for Superman 3, but the, the yeah. first the first oh, two I'll, Superman yeah. movies were not. I watched them, but they weren't they weren't super special to me. Um, Superman wasn't super special? No, I mean, you know, I, I respect Superman and whatnot, and I, I found some interesting things watching it this time. I like that it opens with the action comics thing. Um, I was a little taken aback by the fact that Christopher Reeves is like fourth build on the cast. Yeah, well, they the needed like, it's it's the it's the Nicholson and Batman thing. Like, yeah, they needed yep. the names to make this comic book thing legitimate. Marlon right. Brando, Gene well, Hackman. I should say that Superman is my number one. It's uh, my number one as well. OK, so we'll gush now. Uh, uh, Superman so is. This... No, you go for it. <laughs> <laughs> no, you go. Dark side is. <laughs> Let me say this few amount of things i actually have to say yeah uh, no but you know donner's credited for you know wanting to play it straight and mm -hmm. not be campy mm -hmm. and you know that ushered in the modern age of comic book films i mean uh you know you can you can in many ways thank donner for you know all, all these all the marvel mcu stuff mm -hmm. you can you know influence on batman 89 which was really you know josh going back to what you said as far as superman wasn't totally your thing like for me, Batman was my Batman right, big same. childhood yeah. thing. But yeah. you gotta you you gotta you know give credit where it's due. And for sure. um, you know going back and visiting this, uh, I, I I hadn't watched it in years either, and I only got about halfway through it. But like I said before, with Goonies, the 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 magic and the wonder that he manages to put on screen, uh, it looks like a it looks like a goddamn comic book. Yeah, come mm -hmm. to life. Yes, and I I feel like anyone writing Superman at this point, especially I think lately, uh, and when I say lately, I, I that's a broad term of lately, <laughs> not like in the past two months, but like uh, Superman writers often try to recapture the sort of this kind of yeah. feeling uh, that he captures so well from the uh, you know the source material of uh, he just. The, the 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 majesty of Krypton and the and the 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 heartland of Kansas and uh you know I don't know it, it it's just magical and while it wasn't like a massive part of my childhood it's it's it just cements comic book movies mm -hmm. comic book characters as like a yeah you can you can mine these stories and make amazing stuff out of it there's so much, like you said, I think we touched on this a little bit in the Batman 89 episode too. For the longest time, the public perception of superhero media was the Adam West, uh, you know, Bill Dozier, uh, t uh, Batman TV series. Mm -hmm. And it was really Donner who, who, Donner who came in and said, look, I've got Mario Puzo wants to write a Superman movie and we want to play it straight. And none of the actors they approached took it seriously. Um, it is one of those movies that is like a perfect storm of things lining up correctly. Um, you know, the, the, the right actors for the parts, the right, the right set design, the right costume design. Dude, the set design is mind blowing. Yeah. Especially shout out to 
the Krypton sets, but also Lex Luthor's uh, layer underground is layer, unbelievable. Dude, it's just a, so it is a it's a triumph of set design. There's so many sets that are built for like they made like one minute in the film. Yeah, uh, like it's a whole new set, like a giant set for just like a one minute scene, and then it's gone forever. And while we're here, not to interrupt yeah. you, let's also give out uh, to Ned Beatty who just passed away too. Oh, it was Otis it's hilarious? Yeah, he was Otis in Superman. Um, so. and the uh, yeah, the cast is perfect. Margot Kidder is Lois Lane to me, in, in, in much the same way that Dana Delaney in the animated series is Lois Lane to me. I think she, I think they're both. It's just a it's a beautiful, headstrong, confident performance, and Christopher Reeve is unbelievable. It is a it is a it's a perfect performance. The the he is the one actor and not to disparage anybody who's played superman before or since but he's the one on-screen actor that has made me believe that a man can fly but also made me believe that like (laughs) yeah it's possible that people don't know this is clark kent when he you know he slouches and when he straightens he has a completely different posture a different tone of voice he's an incredible it's an incredible um, measured Shakespearean performance and not everything works in this movie we spend so much time on Krypton with Marlon Brando clearly not having memorized his lines um, <laughs> uh, according to some people who were on set he was actually reading them off of the kid's diaper like I've actually read that from multiple sources like he said Holy I'll do the shit. part I'll do the part if you pay me one million dollars give me top billing and I don't have to learn my lines and they were like, yes, yes, Mr. Brando, because apparently you could just get away with shit like that in Hollywood. Um, but it's the there's stuff that about it that is delightfully camp. It still goes into that goofy place. Like all of the Lex Luthor scenes are so fun. Uh, Gene Hackman is clearly having the time of his life. Oh, yeah. Um, I, and I, I hit upon, I was talking to my girlfriend about this movie earlier because she's never seen it before and we're going to have to like watch it at some point um but i said i said it hasn't aged perfectly and yet it is perfect (laughs) like i don't i I can't imagine a better superman movie coming out of those circumstances at that time uh, there's an innocence to it yes you know what i mean Uh, there's a purity uh, to it a purity to it that you can't really make in this time period there's too much cynicism there's too much you know what i mean like it's it, it feels like that, you know, like the old Superman comics that just feel pure and... Bouncing off of what you said about people taking cues from this version of Superman, especially the writers, I think you still see that in in Grant Morrison's writing and in uh, with, with what Tom Taylor sure. has done with the character recently or Philip Kennedy Johnson, where it's like, what if, what if the most powerful man in the world was also the nicest person <laughs> and like <laughs> yeah. genuinely wanted everyone to be okay. Right. And there's like, there's a comfort to that. And uh, this is not one that I revisit super often. I mean, like me as well, my, my childhood superhero movie was Batman 89. Yep. Uh, and I still watch it all the time too much. Um, but <laughs> Superman, the movie <laughs> is it's it, it is like a salve like putting that movie on immediately transports me i feel better <laughs> like it's a, i don't know what it is it just it's a and i feel i feel hopeful um and i also think it's it's kind of a bummer that there's a new comic book series coming out next month that continues on from donner's movies and uh he's not going to be around for that release right also, I gotta, so I don't end it on a dour note. Can I share maybe my favorite behind the scenes story I've ever read? And it's for Superman, the movie. Sure, sure. Rock it out. So when they talked to Gene Hackman about playing Lex Luthor, he didn't want to wear a bald cap and they were finally able to talk him into it. And then he said, okay, but I'm not going to shave my mustache either. Cause he had like this dope seventies stash, the one he has in night moves. <laughs> and <laughs> And so Donner was like, no, I want, I want Lex to be clean shaven. And then Hackman told the Hollywood reporter a few years ago, he came to set. He says, I showed up for my first day of makeup tests with a fine mustache. And Richard, he said, he said, Dick wearing his own handsome mustache told me mine had to go. He bargained to lose his, if I lost, if I lost mine, 
True to his word, he celebrated my last razor stroke by gleefully pulling off the fake whiskers he'd acquired <laughs> for the occasion. Uh, oh, so like legit, legitimately, he said something like, "All right, it's your turn." And then Richard Donner just kind of pulled off his like Groucho Marx mustache. And um, <laughs> hearing Richard Donner tell the story later, he said, "I thought." Gene was going to strangle me for a second. He looked <laughs> furious and then started cackling. Uh, and Old that's when we dicky. knew we were going to work together. <laughs> like, and I think that it's also worth noting that like Hackman didn't like kind of butted heads with him at the beginning, but by the end of the shoot of Superman and like half of Superman two, the cast loved him so much that some of them threatened not to come back for the sequels once you know <laughs> once he was taken off the film. And he's wow. just such a beloved person. Yeah. But he did actually start at Superman 2. Right. He started it. Yeah, he we'll did a lot get of into Superman that in a 2. Yeah. Which we get that. Actually, we get his version later. Mm-hmm. So. Okay. All right. Jason, you're number three. My number three, since you said Lethal Weapon 1, I'm going with Lethal Weapon 2 <laughs> as my number three. But I You're do doing that because he said that. <laughs> well, no, because I actually had number three, Lethal Weapon one or two. Oh, okay. Toss up. Because I do, since somebody already said Lethal Weapon, I love part two. I love that we get, we find out. <laughs> spoiler alert! If you haven't listened, we find out what happens to Riggs' wife and all that good shit. Jason, your list is like some massive diagram where, like, it's like if then, it's like if, <laughs> if someone says this, then I go here. If they I go, feel hey, like I'm, I I'm trying like to I'm make watching, it. I'm trying to make it interesting. I feel like I'm watching that scene in Endgame where the Ancient One explains like Splinter yes. Time Theory. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Hey, Jason, can we just... are you secretly writing for Loki? Because yeah, I don't right. Understand Maybe. That either. <laughs> Well, I did watch the new episode right before we started. So, so did we. So. Still don't know what the hell's going on. But um, but yeah, oh, I, I, I agree. Like, Lethal Weapon 2 is a great sequel. It's, I mean, oh, dude. it continues yeah. from part one so well. And it still has, like, a dark tone to it. And, um, you know, it's, shit gets kind of nitty gritty there at the end. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, of course, you know, like, I, I, like, I remember when I first watched Lethal Weapon 2, like, I thought Riggs was dead at the end of it. And it oh, kind of yeah. freaked me out. <laughs> I really could put all four lethal weapons on my list because I even they rule. Like, it doesn't matter. Uh, I like all of them. I don't know. Uh, after I'm because after part two, I lost interest. So. Joe Pesci's yeah. performance, dude. That's in okay. Part he, two is to so me, good. Yeah, but yeah, part three and then the Rene Russo and then the child. It just gets too crazy. As far as I'm concerned, it's lethal weapon one or two, but. I love part two. I love the whole truck scene. I won't go to if people haven't seen it. If you haven't seen Lethal Weapon 2, there's something fucking wrong with you. But, uh, <laughs> dude, the whole the thing with, like you said, you get some stuff, stories that get they get tied up. You finally figure out what happens about some things that happened in Riggs' past and mm-hmm. stuff like that. I love, uh, I mean, the to- who doesn't love the toilet scene? Yeah, I mean, it's in that movie, dude. Oh, yeah, a toilet scene. Amazing. Yeah. One of the best toilet scenes in cinema yeah, history. Exactly. I would say. That one, that one Dumb down. and Dumber. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> top but, but top four toilet t- scenes. Hey, mark that down as a potential top Vegas four. Vegas top four toilet scene. But <laughs> how many of you? To- oh, uh, 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 four to- that goddamn Boyle movie. Help me. The what? what? Train movie. spotting. Train spotting. Train oh, spotting. Yeah. <laughs> Here's a toilet. Hey, we got it. we're almost oh, there. Oh no, no, another toilet. Uh, I was movie. picturing someone uh, covered Boondock in like Saints. Asians. Hey, we, we can do the Boondock Saints toilet scene. How about that? What's that boil documentary on boils? <laughs> 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 but I mean, uh, I mean, how many times after that did everybody go? All right, we we go on three, or is it three and then go? Oh yeah, right. I mean, after sure. that, that's. Man, I remember that so much as a kid after that. Everybody mimicked that whole scene. A movie that, like, yeah, invented a cliche, which is, yeah, like, is. which is something worth celebrating, I think. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, yeah, uh, I mean, I, I think the Lethal Weapon movies invented a few cliches. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Oh, definitely. I also love at the, you know, Jason kind of is not about Lethal Weapon 3 or 4, and I don't know if Part 4 has something that super stands out to me, but mm. even Part 3, the opening of, of Lethal Weapon 3 with the bomb defusal, and how that goes terribly wrong. I love that scene. And I think yeah. the comedic stuff is played great in there. Like, 
And the fact that Donner helmed all four of those and kept it consistent, yeah. you know, you you watched Murtaugh's family grow over those yes. movies, and you, yeah. you you know you felt like part of their family, not the Fast and Furious family. How? But how often do you <laughs> get talk about family? A series like that, where yeah, think about Die Hard team. as an example, right? Right, like, goes completely off the rails. Die Hard goes yeah, off like, the rails because mm-hmm. it's made by different people. Exactly. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, it, it, you have like the same creative team more or less shepherding these the story for over a decade uh and you just really don't get that so whereas the argument where die hard is probably the better movie that over lethal weapon lethal weapon is by far the more the solid series, series. series. <laughs> yeah Absolutely. well and also most of the lethal weapon movies i think were written to be lethal weapon movies so, right excuse me which is <laughs> not the case for die hard movies like nope. most of those were reverse engineered from other screenplays <laughs> Um, well, my number three, mm. and I'm going to take a shot in the dark here. And I think my number three is probably going to be Jason's number one. Mm. Um, yep. I, 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 I can already tell you it will be because I know Josh lost boys. Yep. Probably my favorite vampire movie of all time. Uh, I, I watch it over and over again. Uh, See our lost boys episode for our thoughts on yeah. lost boys. <laughs> So, but again, another Donner movie with a, a Carpenter, dude. We have nailed these movies. Another movie with a great soundtrack, too. Yep. Yep. Yes. Uh, uh, well, I mean, okay. So, what did Christopher Nolan take from Richard Donner movies? We we seem to find all these things that Christopher <laughs> Nolan has taken from all these other filmmakers. From everybody else. Has, does anybody have any examples of something Christopher Nolan took from Richard Do you Donner? Mean Christopher movies? Stolen. Yeah, Christopher oh. Stolen. Oh, that, that just, just came to me, guys. I don't know. Sometimes the magic just comes. And There's I, a hashtag well, think, for you right there. Let's see if yeah. we can get that trending. <laughs> Christopher Stolen. I mean, I think know. after Bane we'll breaks Batman's back, doesn't he say, I'm getting too old for this shit? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when he's, when he's getting his knee cartilage looked at by the yeah. doctor, I think he says that. And then there's that bit where, where uh, Bane leans in really close and says, it's all for you, Damien. <laughs> <laughs> um, God, it's so hack to do a Bane impression almost a decade after that stupid nope. movie. No, nope. you're, <laughs> you're in the right place to do hacky shit. Dude. This is um, you're in the right place. Yeah, Donner <clears throat> Donner was originally, I mean, he helped develop the screenplay. It was originally meant to be directed by Donner, and then mm. he got caught up with another project and I think uh, it was the Goonies, wasn't it? It was either Goonies, it or, was Goonies or Lethal Weapon. No, 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 yeah. it was after it was Lethal Weapon because that's right. That's right. Yep. Yeah. 87. Um, yep. Which is interesting. Like it's an interesting thought experiment to wonder how different that movie would have been. Because I feel like Donner Donner and Schumacher have similar uh styles but styles especially when it when it comes to camp in particular and at that yeah. period of time i mean schumacher mm-hmm. was doing like flatliners and 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 lost boys and stuff like that and i feel like i wonder how different it would have been maybe lost boys wouldn't have been as homoerotic had donner took the helm we get into it a little on the episode but donner had originally intended uh, lost boys to be younger and not yes, kind of yeah. into the teenage. It was more Goonies ish yep. vibe I than than think, the darker thing we ended up with. And I think Schumacher, when they decided to skew older, that's right. Yeah, Donner. It was originally going to be more of like. It's so funny. It would have been more like Goonies with. <laughs> yep, it's going to be like Peter Pan with Vampire. Yeah, you would have liked it more, Jason, because it would have been more like uh, Monster Squad. Right. <laughs> no, uh, um, no, no, no. Um, it would have it would have been too close to the Goonies and but not I Monster think, Squad. I think once they skewed older, Schumacher took a lot of the the stuff that's kind of almost inherently there in the screenplay and people kind of, I mean, that whole movie is about discovery. And I think that if you don't, if you don't explore, it was, it was Lost Boys is so ahead of its time in a lot of ways because it very subtly explored uh, feelings of homosexuality or repressed, you know, yeah. you're repressing your true nature. And uh, yeah. that is... And I and sort I of like an a, underground, underground scene, underground, yeah. you know, anti, yeah. you know, establishment kind of. I'm a stuff. Schumacher fan. Like I'll, I'm a Schumacher defender <laughs> in a lot of ways. Like I feel like for some reason people kind of. I mean, I get that his Batman movies aren't universally loved, but it's not a reason to like write off this guy's. And I know yeah. that's like putting it mildly, but like it's not a reason <laughs> no, to agree. like. We agree. We agree. 
it's not a reason to like uh throw out a guy's whole career <laughs> you know? i mean so, now if if donner would have done the batman movies would we have had bat nipples that's what i want to know i don't know no no, okay. no we if, wouldn't have schumacher we had bat nipples so yeah sure <laughs> Sure. Well, Jason, do you have anything else to say of, of your number one Lost Boys? My number three. Its movie is old, but it would still it still stands up today. Yeah, as mm -hmm. a vampire movie. Like you know, you tell your your friends when you're hanging out, rent this movie, watch it. You will love it. I mean, it's a vampire movie, but it is it's just a good it's well written story. It's well shot. It looks great. It's got kids. It's got action. It's got mm -hmm. freaking bathtubs exploding with vampire goo you know all <laughs> kinds of, of stuff jason's Lots all about the vampire goo <laughs> you know weird uh anecdote uh <laughs> tangentially related to uh lost boys um there were i had a, tickets for a whole bunch of shows before covid shut everything down mm -hmm. and the two that i'm most bummed about missing uh one was my chemical romance <laughs> i was supposed mm -hmm. to see them yep Two, I had tickets to see the saxophone guy from the oh, Lost Boys. <laughs> oh, Tim Capello. Tim Capello. Yeah. Yeah. From, yeah. Um, yeah. We he love was, him on Gunship. Featured on yeah, Gun, right. Gunship songs. Yeah. Yeah. He was doing like he was doing a show here in Pensacola, and I was it was like literally the first week of lockdown, and I was like, oh, well, maybe oh. they'll still do it because like, God, kids Not don't that care show. about themselves. <laughs> Not that show. <laughs> Too much grinding on that show. Right. <laughs> that would have been a lot right. Like, everybody would have been all shirtless and sweaty and stuff. <laughs> yeah. That show, so, yeah. Would have been like the rave in the Matrix Reloaded. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. You had to bring that up. Oh, man. So oh. I think, did, did we, have we touched on everybody yet, or do you still have a number two? I'm done. I'm done. Okay. I think I have that a number two. Oh, I have a, I have a number two. Number, okay. So, I have a number two. Nathan, number two. A number a number two, what I do best. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Drop that the... number two. <laughs> Who does number two work for? So it's so funny because I thought maybe I was cheating with this one. And then I, uh, but it's not anymore. Uh, so <laughs> Not since we've brought up the produced stuff. No, you can, yeah, you can just throw whatever you want. Is Lost Boys. <laughs> uh, Superman 2, the Richard Donner cut. I knew you were uh, going to say That's that. mine! I which got was, it on my yeah, list! Which yes. was released in, in two, not released until 2006. And man, can you imagine? Uh, I have not seen the Donner cut. But I okay. have either. Well, can you imagine just you know letting a director finish their superman movie <laughs> after it had been hacked up by the studio i can't imagine another example <laughs> and not spend and not spending 80 million dollars <laughs> and badly photoshopping jared leto into a scene um anyway <laughs> I, well, uh, oh, real quick shots though. fired i store the Schumacher i do want to say i do want to say in the snyder cut the Joker scene in that movie is better than any of the Joker stuff that he did before that. Like I yeah, would love to see that Joker. It's a completely different performance. Yeah. It's a completely different persona of jo Joker. Totally different mindset. He's would... weirdly wearing Roger Rabbit's gloves. <laughs> <laughs> but why are we destined to repeat ourselves with these like sequels to Superman movies that are start with one director in like, I know unfortunate circumstance for Zack yeah. Snyder, but like, it's just so funny that it just so happens that Superman has fallen down this track twice. Now. I don't know guys, we live in a society. Um, <laughs> so yeah, it, it's a, it, Superman two is an interesting thing because the movie was, you know, he clashed with the producers a lot. The movie was taken away from him after he'd finished shooting like 75% of it. Yeah. He was replaced by Richard Lester, who would go on to direct Superman 3. Mm -hmm. um, also the director of A Hard Day's Night, which is legitimately one of my all-time favorite movies, but like not the guy you think of to, to make a superhero epic. Right. But yeah. um, uh, And you can tell that he made A Hard Day's Night because there's a ton of weird slapstick that gets thrown into the <laughs> yeah. Superman sequels. Um, but this is such a weird little experiment because it's he didn't film everything. Some of the scenes are literally... Um, screen tests that they filmed there's yeah. a you know in in the theatrical version of superman 2 lois gets superman basically to to reveal himself by throwing herself into the falls mm -hmm. and in the donner cut she pulls out a gun and fires it at him see what you almost did uh, throwing yourself off a building 30 stories off. can't you see what a tragic mistake you almost made i made a mistake i made a mistake because I risk my life instead of yours. Lois, 
D don't be insane. And don't fall down, because you're just going to have to get up again. No, 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 don't be crazy now. What? for the longest time she pulls the trigger he, he's like you know lois what are you doing like he's kind of like hunched over and she pulls the trigger and he completely like stands up straight folds his arms and he is superman like it's un, it's an yeah, unbelievable just... piece of physical acting and there, there's stuff like that those those you lose so many of those subtleties in the theatrical version of superman 2 and the um and and the later sequels i love and, when just yeah. interrupting briefly on that Go moment i love when frank quietly am i saying that right yes mm -hmm. i love when he kind of reintroduces that when they did yes. like the all-star superman stuff and all-star superman is the the greatest modern superman story like yeah i like just far I, none <laughs> he just totally nails that shit but anyway carry on. absolutely and well and the thing is it's not a perfect movie it's it's significantly less well written than, than superman the movie some of it makes no sense but you can also tell that this is like a showman at work like he like donner's throwing his own ideas into the mythology adding interesting set pieces um it's the first time we've seen a super villain battle on screen genuinely because the you know the villain of the first movie is lex luthor and it's more of like a, i'm gonna detonate a bomb and you have to stop all of these disasters yeah. um you know, we'd seen Adam West punch it, punch it out with Burgess Meredith and Cesar Romero. But <laughs> yeah. like, you know, this is the first time you've got these like super beings throwing Gethod. down. And it's it's an it's an incredible piece of filmmaking that, that is still impressive, especially when you think about what they had available to them at the time. Yeah. Um, and uh, again, I just think it's so cool that he got to uh, almost 30 years after the movie came out, finish his vision. Yeah. yeah that I was something did. that I didn't get around to revisiting, mm -hmm. but now that I've, now that we're here. Yeah. And I'm thinking about Donner, like I, yeah. I, I'm almost through, I'm, you know, about halfway through Superman. I'm going to go immediately into the Donner cut. Do the cut, Donner actually. cut. Watch yeah. the Donner cut. Yeah. It's also, a, it's definitely my favorite cool. reindeer. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There you go. I know. I, I'm. I'm a Rudolph. So. Uh, but uh, <laughs> but talk about Superman too. I mean, like like Nathan was saying, you get to see Superman fight a super villain for once. Well, three of them basically. Yeah. And I mean, I, we got. I mean, we're gonna get into quotes and stuff. I mean that that movie gives us one of the biggest quotes if you're a nerd ever in that. Oh, Neil before I Zod. Would know. Neil before Zod. I mean, <laughs> dude. But I mean, as a kid, I loved Superman one. I mean, Jenny brought that yeah. up. But I mean, I did. But I, I seem to have loved Superman too. I mean, I saw the original, which he did not get directing credit for, which yeah. he had done most of the movie. But then later when they come out with the Donner cut, yeah. I, I watched that. And I just love Superman too. I like the the thing, like you said, he's fighting a super villain. You didn't yeah. see that as a kid. I mean, it was great. And I love Zod character. Yeah, so. I think I think Superman the movie is a better film, but Superman two is infinitely more watchable, uh, like like yeah. rewatchable. It's the one oh, I yeah. revisited the most as a kid I've because seen it, it was way just more so than fun. the original. Um, so when we when you revisit this now, is mm -hmm. it always going to be the Donner cut, or is it? Do you no, go I, I go back and forth because there's some really there's some really great physical comedy. Like as much as I ragged on it in Superman two, like Christopher Reeve has this incredible moment in the theatrical cut where Lois like starts washing downstream because <laughs> they're at the falls. Yeah. And he's just like, Lo Lois, Lois, I, I, and he's like climbing dang. on the like, rocks and says, trying to get her. Yeah. Like. <laughs> yeah he, he like straightens his tie and he's like, ah, dang it. Like, it's so <laughs> funny. It's hysterical. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, I, I, I will, I want to throw one more thing out there. Um, wouldn't it be great if, since there were all these other Kryptonians, the movie took a Teen Wolf title style and was called Superman, comma, two, T-O-O. <laughs> okay. And so Josh, also, Josh, didn't you just pick up Teen Wolf 2 the other day? I did. <laughs> Cruise Control. Oh, my God. <laughs> the Legend of Curly's Gold. <laughs> oh, my God. 
the legend of Keanu short curlies <laughs> from point break episode. Josh oh, yes. <laughs> well, that's everybody's top four Donner movies. And we want to close this out with a special edition of you're going to need a bigger quote. And we're going to talk about some of our favorite quotes from Donner movies. Yeah. Let's start with Eric on this one. Uh, Lois Lane says, how big are you? Uh, how tall are you? Incredible line, of, like, incredible delivery. Super D, bud. Super D. Super she D. titles that article "I Spent the Night with Superman." <laughs> like the thing that I love about that movie is it came out in the '70s, uh, and she's such a feminist character, and like, like genuinely, like so, like a strong written character, and she is horny on Maine for Superman the entire from the word go, <laughs> and I think that that's wonderful. I genuinely do. <laughs> I think in the in the age of uh, where we're at, where we're trying to you know include strong female characters, yeah. kind of course correct for some unfortunate stuff in the past and stuff mm-hmm. like that. I think people are afraid to make women horny in movies. <laughs> I mean, just talking about movies from the seventies and things sure. like that. I mean, just I mean, it's not it's not a uh, it's not a weakness to be horny. No. And he woos her without inviting her to his weird mansion and putting her across from him at a giant table. <laughs> Could you pass yeah. the salt? Yeah. He just takes her to a secluded ice palace in the middle of nowhere where she has nowhere to run or yeah. freeze to death. Yeah. Right. She's like, so Do you give stay yourself here? to me, woman? <laughs> he, he goes into the he goes into the fortress of solitude and he's like i don't think i've ever been in this room before are you guys familiar with the implication is it is that what it's called <laughs> hold on you guys carry on i'm gonna look something yeah 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 go for it jason um, go for it yeah uh, uh i got one uh from superman 2 this orders to go where he pushes the guy down the bar oh yes uh, in a non-clark kent way of mr nice guy beating that guy's ass who had beat his that, ass that must have felt so powered. good <laughs> yeah, and then uh, I got one from Lethal Weapon. It's uh, between Murtaugh and Riggs. It says, God hates me. That's what it is. And Riggs says, hate him back. It works for me. Yep, that was one of mine. <laughs> yeah. I got you. Nathan? Um, I've got a couple. Uh, Lex Luthor and Superman. Some people can read War and Peace and come away thinking it's a simple adventure story. Others can read the ingredients on a chewing gum wrapper and unlock the secrets of the universe. <laughs> <laughs> I had that one too. That was a good one. And then uh, Philippe, the monk in Lady Hawk. We've come full circle, Lord. I would like to think there's some higher meaning in this. It would certainly reflect well on you. <laughs> well, we're laughing, but none of us have seen that nope, other than nope. Nathan. Well, <laughs> Jason's seen it, but um, Jenny, did you have any? This is our time. Up there is their time. Down here is our time. Yes. That speech in the Goonies is it's so good. iconic. Goonies yeah. never say die. That's one of mine. Hey, Hi, you guys. guys. Hey, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Yay, we did it. Uh, one of mine from Lethal Weapon uh, that Jason didn't steal from me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you ever met anybody you didn't kill? Well, I haven't killed you yet. <laughs> nice. Classic. I never forget an asshole. <laughs> and one of my other favorites from it is when he's at the when he's doing the cocaine deal at the beginning with mm. Anthony Kiedis' dad. You think I'm crazy? Yeah. Are you calling me crazy? You think I'm crazy? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, you want to see crazy? I'll tell you. <laughs> now that's a real badge. I'm a real cop, and this is a real fucking gun. Okay, pal. Hey, nose is in the dirt, asshole. Eric, you got any more? No, I'm too old for this shit. Uh, <laughs> Wait, that's I'm Anthony... the oldest guy. I'm the oldest guy here. That's Anthony Kiedis' dad at the beginning of the the, the guy with the mullet that holds Riggs a uh, hostage. That's Anthony wow. Kiedis' dad. Yeah, Danny yeah. Glover is Anthony Kiedis' dad. <laughs> <laughs> Red Hot Chili Poppers. <laughs> I got one more quote because uh, it's from it's from Demon Knight. I wish I could just play the clip here because I cannot do Billy Zane justice in this scene. Human. You're not worth the flesh you're printed on! Fuck this cowboy shit! You fucking hold up, hold up, well then there, motherfuckers! All you have to do is give me the goddamn key! And we could get on with our lives! Alright, this property is hereby 
condemn. Because I was watching it earlier and I was laughing my ass off just watching it for this and writing it down again. And I was like, oh my God, dude, that's, <laughs> I love, that's, I am. The, that's the best part of that movie. Well, while we were talking, well, like we were talking about Ned Beatty, who passed away too. Uh, as of today, uh, uh, Robert Downey Sr. died earlier mm. today. Mm-hmm. Junior's dad. Mm-hmm. So. Is he Junior's but, dad? I would have never known yes. that. No. Mm. Hey, mm. you don't know in Hollywood, dude. People are named the same. They're not related. So, <laughs> I mean, people still confuse Christopher Reeves and Christopher Reeve. Um, one they thing both I- played Superman, but two different people. <laughs> George Reeves. <laughs> George Reeves, yeah. That's what I meant. The Reeves name. Everybody thinks they're like that's his dad. I'm like, no, they were not related. Um, and in, in in preparation and watching some Donner movies, I I I watched Conspiracy Theory. I know I'd oh, seen yeah. it years ago. Um one thing I did want to bring up is there's a point in the movie where uh Mel Gibson and Julia Roberts are walking through the city mm-hmm. and on a movie marquee behind them you can see that they're playing Lady Hawk. Oh great! I love so, that. I thought that was pretty funny. I that's took a note about fun. That. Uh, that's a fun one. I haven't seen in a long time. Conspiracy theory. I remember thinking. I'm one thing stuck with me from that movie, and this is not at all relevant. But uh, when he puts the beer bottle on the doorknob, yeah, yeah, uh, I always thought that was brilliant because <laughs> you can even if somebody just jiggles the knob, yep. yeah, they don't have to be trying to break in. Just the knob jiggle. There's some crazy shit in that movie, man. Like Good in that shit. in that particular scene where where the, the match, yeah, where he just lights up his whole apartment and it goes up in flames. And... Patrick Stewart rules in that movie. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, my house currently is set up. If I need to burn it all down, I mean, it, it's ready to go. One <laughs> well, thing I don't, know, I mean, I I can't attest to like any how how crazy conspiracy th- people go, how deep they get into things and whatnot. But one thing I found a little weird about it is, I mean. Mel Gibson's character Jerry in that movie is is really deep into all this stuff. But like, you get into his apartment, it's set, it's rigged, ready to go. Like, if he needs to set it ablaze, he can. But he's got a padlock on the refrigerator, and his coffee and tapioca pudding and orange juice are all in containers locked with padlocks. Yeah, it's, and I'm like, I mean, this guy would be MAGA, right? This guy's full on MAGA <laughs> in modern day. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> You had to ruin the whole podcast. Well, I'm like, sorry. Eric. I'm just thinking thank out you. loud. You know, this guy's definitely. Well, we would like to thank everyone for coming along with us <laughs> while we talk about Richard Donner uh, and and kind of remembering his films uh, due to his passing. Uh, any kind of closing statements anybody wants to make about Donner? Any 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 kind of any of his movies that we haven't talked about that you guys want to bring up anything from? No, I just, uh, I appreciate you guys having me on. This is a, a guy who, you know, it was funny. I, there was, when I was going back through his filmography, realizing how much of my, like, I, I think I knew in the back of my mind how much of my childhood he shaped, but it's so weird seeing it all yeah. literally laid out like that. I mean, there's been some really lovely, uh, I mean, uh, articles written about him and his passing and people who've worked with him reaching out and talking about their their work with him. And um it's just been really great to see that kind of um, mark, that impression, you know, yeah. that, that's left. Uh, I mean, he 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 genuinely revolutionized uh, modern filmmaking, and I'm very grateful to have been able to talk about him for a couple hours with you guys. Agreed. Yeah, definitely. And you know, to have a career that long in Hollywood and yeah, walk yeah. out the other side, basically adored by yeah. most people that yeah. you work with. Right. has to say something about the guy and for uh, sure mm-hmm. you know that's, it's that's not easy to do so i'm sure he was a wonderful man yeah. and uh yeah i mean created so many legendary movies and Char- had such an impact well great stuff i was gonna say characters but i think the writers would be responsible for that so <laughs> I'll, I'll rescind my statement yeah, so i mean i mean this like you were you're saying like he walked out the other the other side here i mean that he lived 91 years of his life worked yes. that long in hollywood I, I hope I make it to 91. That's a hell of a yeah. Yeah. It's a long life and a well-deserved uh, siesta. I'm seriously, like the guy never stopped working, never stopped mm. innovating. And I think that's fucking rad. Like we should yeah. all hope to have such a great career. Absolutely. Yeah. And I mean, awesome. and all of us, all of us comic book guys, I mean, if it wasn't for Richard, yeah. Arnold, said, Superman, 
he had his hands in the original run of X-Men that yep, basically, X-Men movies, yeah. even though that was Fox, it ended up giving us oh, the yeah. MCU I mean, he's later. Largely responsible, responsible for the for all of it and yeah. all the comic I mean, stuff. So, so I mean, cool. besides the action movies, I mean, in the comic book world, that man should be put up on a mantle. Mm-hmm. So there should well, be a statue of him in the Bat Cave. <laughs> right next to the t-rex and the giant penny in the yep. giant co- yeah the giant co- there you go. i love it well on that note we're going to close out this episode uh thanks for listening to our top four favorite donner movies and reminiscing about donner's movies we really appreciate you guys listening we will be back with our regular episodes uh next time but we wanted to drop this one in there just due to the circumstance so richard donner you will be missed we are big fans if you if you didn't think so Go back and listen to this episode. You'll hear how big of fans we are. So, Until next time, be kind. Rewind! 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 Excelsior. Wrong guy. <laughs> <laughs> We're done. It's over. You've been listening to the VHS Files Minisode. We drop new episodes every Friday, so make sure you're subscribed and leave us a rating and a review wherever you get your podcast. Interact with us on all social media platforms at VHS Files Podcast. Email us any questions, comments, movie suggestions, or games you'd like to hear on a mini-sode at VHS Files Podcast at gmail.com. Thanks for listening. We'll be back. Bullshit. What kind of Mickey Mouse setup do you got over there? I get so confused when we do these and it's not our regular theme song. It might be oh, oh, I'm sorry. Anyway, I'm leaving. Hey, can somebody make me another margarita? Oh, oh no, I oh, know. Chords were tripped over.